week, October 14th. Looking like we're going to start off a little bit of rain, but turn into a nice afternoon. This week's code of conduct is to maintain cleanliness and condition of our vehicles and our equipment. Uh, ben Dow, anything to add on this code item this, of, of the week? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, keeping everything clean helps us have a little bit more pride in in our equipment and what we do. So I enjoy keeping things clean and seeing a good looking ECI piece of equipment or truck that's well cared for on the road. It looks professional. Well said. Uh, so another seven days without a recordable injury. Good job this week. We had a couple upticks on, on the auto side on uh, the last couple weeks. So uh, remember last week's code of, uh, code of conduct is to drive safely, defensively, and courteously. Um, this week, I wanted to quickly highlight our accident prevention. This is something that we're, you know, pretty good at. It's been 117 days without a, a really kind of a serious accident. But my goal is to really finish this season out strong. Uh, I would love to get the rest of the season uh, without a, a recordable. And these are the things that we need to do day in and day out, minute by minute, decision by decision to making sure that we work safe. Uh, so 95% of all accidents are really caused by unsafe conditions and unsafe acts. So types of acts that we see are using defective equipment, using the wrong tool for the job, not using personal protective equipment, exceeding equipment working load limits, operating equipment without permission, uh, deliberate or willful disobedience to safety rules. Those are all kind of unsafe acts. Those are all kind of the behaviors that lead to an accident. So if you find somebody or if you identify yourself doing any of these unsafe acts, let's try to check yourself and kind of get back into compliance with our standards. And, and that's what we do every Friday at, here at ECI is to kind of talk about the, the, the best practices to work safe in construction. So some of the unsafe conditions that we see uh, that we need to identify again the, with the changing se uh, seasons that were coming up, ice, snow and mud, uh, slip trips and falls, uh, faulty equipment and not being able to identify those faulty equipment, uh, housekeeping, excessive noise, hazardous chemicals, inadequate lighting, especially this time of year when we're starting the day out uh, in the dark. Uh, in a, 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 I'm sorry, temperatures are changing uh, and then we got confined space. Uh, again, those are all those kind of unsafe conditions that we need to make sure we identify uh, before we uh, start our day. And again, the best thing we can do is have a good morning briefing with our JHA with good communication, how we're going to start the day and how we're going to work safe throughout the day. So our code to prevention is always try to be proactive to safety. Again, uh, start the day off with the JHA to recognize those hazards, imp implement proper safety controls. Let's eliminate those unsafe acts and unsafe conditions, and then actively care for your fellow coworkers. That's our best uh, method um, is to keep each other accountable to the safe practices. And if you see something, let's say something. And then mix in some wellness. Um, definitely, if you're having some issues, please contact Health and Safety. We'll get you through and into our wellness program. Again, it's a really added benefit. I think we've added two people in the last week, something that we're pushing hard, and hopefully uh, everybody takes advantage of this great program. With that said, that's all I have. Let's really focus in and work safe as the final push of the, the construction season is upon us. Let's not take shortcuts. Let's not take unnecessary risks. Anything to add, Ken? Yeah, stay focused. Yeah, well said. When it comes to especially a dangerous task, you got to stay uh, focused. And dangerous task can mean driving down the road. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, that's all okay. I have for this morning. If anyone has any uh, further comments or questions, contact Health and Safety. We're here to help. Take it away, Ken. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my screen. Let's see, did I do that right? I think I did it wrong. Yeah, we're seeing your teams. Yeah, I got to pick the right screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. This is better, right? We got it. Okay, I'm sure I'm in the wrong, in the right week here. Accident prevention, okay. 
Hey, we have some announcements. Uh, congratulations to Jacob Verano. He's ECI's newest foreman. So congratulate Jacob if you see him today. ECI swag we have uh, in stock now. The navy blue Carhartt hooded and crew neck sweatshirts. And the cost is $25 each can, and also can be deducted by through your payroll. Check with Sarah. And ECI will be donating all the proceeds to the cancer UVM Cancer Foundation, just like we do with the T-shirts. The company buys the uh, the shirts and the sweatshirts in this case, and uh, everything that comes in uh, for the the charges of twenty five dollars in this case uh, per sweatshirt gets donated to the uh, Cancer Society at UVM. And oops, cold weather is coming, so make sure you you're uh, treating your your diesel fuel with the the white supplement. And we have a new baby. Congratulations to Walter and Wendy. This is Hannah Grace Lazares, and she was born October 10th, seven pounds, four ounces. So congratulations. We're pretty excited about that. And like to see Hannah Grace as an ECI employee someday. That'd be great. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Let me just move this little thing out of the way, this little icon, so I can scroll down. So anyway, we're uh, we're looking to to wear our pink, especially on on Fridays. And you can get T-shirts from Sarah again, ten dollars each. All proceeds going to the UVM Medical Center Foundation. And just a reminder, we uh, initiated this uh, earlier last month, the ECI Employee Personal Loan Program. So if you have questions, you can uh, click that link or check with the accounting department. Primary Wellness Program. Uh, again, this is a, a useful link when you're, when you're ready to sign up. Hopefully you are signed up or thinking about it seriously. And there's another link there. It's a, getting to be a good time to in the fall here to, to do it and, and related to wellness uh, i think we uh, we probably got a a flu vaccination and maybe flu slash covid vaccination program coming up right uh, as far as free shots would that be right matt yeah i'm just having a hard time getting the scheduling but, but yeah okay. hopefully in the next month we'll have something they say that this year that the flu will will be a problem earlier than in past years. So we want to make sure we get that pretty soon. And I think I heard the other day and it's good to get it done before Thanksgiving. That that way sometimes, you know, family get togethers causes that uh, potential for a higher infection of of influenza. So I, I assume that uh, that Phil Forster's on the line here and he'd like to yes, present. Phil, you out there? Yes, I am. Ken, can you hear me? All right. Do you want to? Do, yep, sounds good. Do you want to take over or do you want to, me to scroll down? I'll just scroll down. I've got it open here. And uh, if, yeah, you can just scroll down. Okay. All right. Go ahead then. All right. Uh, it's me again. Uh, this last week we went over the uh, precast fabrication and the, the hard work that went into that. And now we're going to go over the uh, its installation and the shutdown weekends and all the hard work that went in before and after after those periods of time. Uh, again, for Clarendon, Wallingford, and Manchester. ECI is contracted with VTrans on the Clarendon, Wallingford, and the Manchester projects. These are two separate railroad bridge rehab project contracts that involve eight different bridges. The precast discussed last week will be installed on a total of three different bridges during three separate railroad shutdowns. So far, ECI has completed two of the three shutdowns. Uh, the state's agreement with the railroad provides for several weekend shutdowns and a single five-day shutdown. Stiff fines are imposed if the bridges and track is not train ready at the conclusion of any shutdown period. Each 15 minute period of delay results in an additional penalty. So it's very important that those get finished on time. Uh, in preparation for the shutdown work, ECI was responsible for detailing the precast, jacking and shoring plants and erection plans. ECI also performed permitting and made land use agreements with abutters to gain access to these bridges as some of them are very remote. Performing a large amount of work in a short period of time requires much planning and preparation. Anything that can be done before the shutdown needs to be. Prior to the shutdowns, crews installed shoring towers, performed preliminary demo, 
installed crane pads, equipment access ramps, and flooded the tracks as needed. The first shutdown at Bridge 89 involved the replacement of three bridge seats in a back wall and was completed in approximately 48 hours, one day ahead of schedule. During the shutdown, the bridge was jacked from its bearings, the bridge seats and back wall excavated and removed, and new components installed, grouted, and backfilled, and the track was reinstalled and resurfaced. Geometry of the Stu Girder Bridge and its existing substructure allowed it to be jacked under the end floor beam off the abutment after the initial concrete repairs were made. The bridge seat replacement on this project was unusual. Waste block sized pieces of the deteriorated concrete abutment caps were removed and replaced with precast. ECI and a subcontractor wire sawed these seats as well as the back wall by fishing diamond rope through, through rock drilled holes ahead of the shutdown. Shims were used to transfer the live load and keep the road from being crushed. The second shutdown at Bridge 71 involved monolithic back wall, bridge seat, and wing wall pieces and was completed in three and a half days, which is one and a half days ahead of schedule. Once the last train went through the project, the bridge was jacked up and off its abutments and they were excavated and demolished. Pre-demo was not necessary on this bridge. Since the abutments on this bridge were being replaced completely, jacking the bridge as we did on Bridge 89 was not an option. ECI built jacking frames using driven H piles and beams to support the 120 kip structure. Each new abutment consisted of three precast pieces and weighed approximately seven and a half tons. ECI's TCC 750 was staged on one side while Miller Construction's TCC 500 was staged on the other. The cranes worked simultaneously at times, flying pieces to the crews on the ground, setting them in their respective locations and on shims to achieve the correct elevation. Precast pieces were then dialed and grouted to the remaining masonry substructure, backfilled and the track reinstalled and resurfaced. ECI used approximately 280 pounds of rapid set grout on this bridge, which was extended with approximately 150 50 pound bags of three inch stone. That was nearly seven yards of cubic, uh, seven cubic yards of grout, all mixed by hand in a period of a uh, few hours. The project team is currently preparing and planning for the final shutdown of Bridge 93, which will take place at the end of the month. That's a lot of grout. <laughs> that was a lot of grout, yes. And a lot yep. of five gallon buckets we went through mixing it. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was all hands on deck. Um, so here you can see the guys on Bridge 93 installing uh, some H piling that a beam's gonna rest on event later um, prior to the shutdown to help jack the bridge off because the um, remaining concrete behind will be removed. Yeah, you can actually see the, that corner piece there that's coming off with the- exactly. uh, under yeah. including underneath the bearings yep um here are the survey uh, the survey teams were on hand to help lay these pieces out um it was their their alignment and and positioning was very important as the three pieces had to fit together uh fairly seamlessly and also interact with with the bearings and and the uh, masonry substructure it's probably one of the more creative um survey setups i had seen but they were mm. being underneath the bridge and in the water they were completely out of the way um, and we're able to uh, survey both both abutments from one location. As we talked about preparation and planning and, and a lot of hard work goes into these shutdowns. So here you can see our fleet of light towers headed out for the shutdown. Uh, enough to make it seem like daytime, 24 hours a day, which which is helpful when you have to work through the night. Yep. And then there, there's the last train coming through the project. Um, luckily, we got we got lucky on both of these shutdowns. There was no delay with the train. They actually came early, in some cases about eight hours early. So that really helped us kind of get a jump start on everything. Um, the railroad has been fairly good to communicate with, and um, it's been it's been a, a good relationship to have on the side as well. That's a great picture. You can see that Mike's just ready to go there. <laughs> every, every yeah, exactly. Every, Mike, everybody's Mike every, ready. Everybody's ready, itching for that for the, to see that red light on the end of the train. And yep. that that means the track is ours for the rest of the weekend. Yep. And we're off to the races. And so here on the next picture, you can see um, Jason helping guide out uh, one of the the bridge seats. The the sides you can see how clean those cuts are. Um, that was that was the, the guys had core drilled um, in two planes on on the two further extents and down from the top. And we had fed the wire saw cable through there. And then that allowed us basically ahead of the shutdown to have these pieces loose, ready to go. We uh, installed a D-ring on the end and just yanked them out sideways with an excavator. And it, it allowed for a clean surface to work from and a quick removal. Okay. 
This is at bridge 89, and you can see the, the jacks set on the abutment. We had um, previously in the season repaired these abutments to uh, allow for this kind of loading. It was part of the contract, but it also worked um, for us to use, use our jacks right at that location off the end floor beam. Um, I'm not sure who that is, but they're they're cleaning cleaning off the seat, getting it ready for um, getting it ready for the precast piece. Yeah, this is a lot simpler jacking than most. <laughs> yes, yes. In the uh, here's the back wall. We saw it last week getting loaded on a trailer, and much the same way, it is rigged and uh, flown into flown into position here. The, the bridge seats at that point had not been installed, but the uh, the back wall, the back wall was going in, and it's fairly fairly simple rigging plan and simple installation in this case. Yeah, and you were able to leave the uh, the return sections there, wing yes. walls. Guys are standing on. That's good. They're good size pieces to allow for a lot of you know attached guests, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they were in decent condition compared to some of the the, the existing back wall uh, kind of just snapped off. You were able to flop it off. It definitely needed to be replaced. There was an old coal joint there, and it worked in our favor. And you can see a nice close-up picture of the piece um, coming down, resting on its shims, string line, a lot, lot of different points to measure, uh, measure from and 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 eyeball, and and just kind of help help guide the piece to its exact location. Yep, pretty cool. Here's here's roughly the, the same location. You can see the jacks again. Now it's with the precast piece in on bridge 89. One of the guys is rock drilling and, and, and anchoring it down to the existing substructure. And it, it here we are on bridge 93 flying in one of the uh, one of the middle pieces um, out of the out of the three. It's it's the rigging plan had to change a little bit to allow for us to be able to swing it underneath the bridge in this case. Um, a lot of hands on deck for this. It's it's important. Every, everyone's got their corner to watch and their nail that they want they want their piece to land on, and it 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 takes takes quite a bit of manpower to get it to land exactly where you want. Here's an ele uh, an elevation of 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 the bridge seat and the back wall. How they interacted. The bridge is now freed up. Pr prior to this, the bridge had been. Uh, the, the back wall had been moved with this replacement. The back wall has moved back three inches, giving the bridge some room to expand. It's not rubbing against the back wall anymore, and it's allowed to. The bearings are allowed to work as as they're intended. Once they're installed, then they get to rest at the hotel. <laughs> then they get to rest uh, only for a few hours every night. Um, yeah. Um, but it's it, that quickly turns the yeah. hotel into a, it looks like a in the new ECI headquarters. Um, yeah. Parking lots <laughs> full of our vehicles. And uh, everyone rests for a couple hours, and then we get right back to it. Yep, that's pretty cool. Kind of hard to get up in that few hours of sleep, though, isn't it? It is, but the the adrenaline's going. Um, I that, think everyone's everyone's got the same mission, the same goals, and it's uh, yep. the camaraderie and and right. yeah, it's exciting to be part of. Exactly. Um, here's everyone working together to get that back wall out. Again, these this is uh at bridge ninety three. You can see the, how deteriorated it is. They, they they broke apart fairly easily and quickly. Of course, you never know what you're going to get into, but they are slated for replacement, which usually indicates that they're in poor condition. And they right. guys worked in tandem here to, to break apart and pull these pieces into the excavation and get them out of there. And then here is the uh, is the sub is the sub base prepped. The, the uh, existing masonry has been uh, chipped down where it needed to be. There, we did end up finding some high spots. It's always hard to tell when the when the superstructure or the substructure is in place where you know what the stone actually does underneath it. And in this case, there was some shoddy craftsmanship back in the '60s, or no, I, I, earlier than that actually. And uh, yeah, so we, we we chipped it down, leveled it with grout, and then and put our shim stacks on it and set everything to grade the night before with plans to set the precast the next day. And here is the uh, the the train of 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 precast pieces. Is two of the three. They're they're all sitting on the rail car, and and it's got loaded at one of our access points, and and they're headed down the rail to the crane now. Three pieces on each side, and 
And then this next picture is, 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 was one of my favorite moments. We finally got to the point where we were setting two pieces at the same time. That doesn't always work out, but we, we, had, we had enough help and, and, and things were going smoothly. And so you can see both cranes flying in their respective pieces for, for either side. That's Miller's TCC 500 in the back and ECI's TCC 750 flying the PCC in the foreground. Pretty cool picture for sure. Mm -hmm. They take lunch breaks too. I, I thought they never really stopped for anything, but they do take a break occasionally, at least during, once during a shutdown, right? <laughs> yes, uh, that was our only uh, our only lunch break during that shutdown, but um, we cast these nice pieces. They acted like a nice couch and everybody got, got yeah. to take a break for a minute and, and rest up once everything was set and ready for grout. It's like good timing to sit and rest and admire your work and and take a little break. Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that was this was leading in into that 21 hour day that the guys had. So definitely the, the, the break probably helped us get us across the finish line. Yep. <laughs> and then once the pieces were in and grouted, uh, everything, everything was getting backfilled. Yep. Both sides can sometimes work simultaneously again and uh, with enough manpower, it's easy to do. Uh, here you can see one of the, the spots that was slated for repair uh, with paint. Uh, there was some painting, um, some river replacement, and some seal replacement on all these bridges, as well as bearings. Um, this is the, the only area that they wanted painted, so that's it looks a little goofy, but um, it still does get a coat of brown paint. And the bearings are, um, there was a long lead time on the bearings, so currently the bridges are sitting on um, wood just to allow them to still function, um, and they will be jacked again, and then the bearings installed. And that's pretty typical of a lot of these jobs. Yes, yep. And here, the, the, here's the track crew working hard to, to get, get the ties in towards the end of the shutdown on either approach. Of course, all hands on deck to get it spiked and tamped. And then, of course, we we get to use our our own tamper to help. Yep. Finish it all. Surfacing. Yep. Then they'd be ready for the first train on time for both shutdowns so far. Way ahead of schedule, exactly. Way ahead. So that was yep. that was very hopefully. Well, I know we will get it again for the for the last shutdown as well. Yep. So for the photo archives, I have Bridge 130 again at the. At the completion on the left side was 2010 after we installed the new bearings. And then on the right, unfortunately, is after Irene. And you can see our work held up very nicely, but all the, the substructure settled because of the scour and erosion. So it was quite the quite the disappointment to see all that work within just over a year, I guess. So you give it a year and a half being uh you know kind of destroyed because they had to take it all out in order to rebuild the substructure so hopefully it won't happen on these jobs i, I hope so uh <laughs> hope not yeah exactly oh yeah hope so not. Was, yes no i hope not yep. yeah you know irene was hopefully a once in a lifetime event we'll see so that's what i got thank you phil very good job we'll pass it back to matt and uh, everyone have a good day out there. I understand the rain's going to start to dissipate here and it'll be a, a better day for the afternoon. A lot of rain last night. It was like two inches of rain last night. Yeah. Excellent job, team. Very impressive. Yes, if very watch impressive it, job. Yeah. If you uh, watch this meeting in a group setting, please send me a message so I can capture a good attendance. Thanks for everybody for joining in today. <clears throat> Let's have a safe day. Let's have a great day. Take care.